I'd like to welcome all of our students to the first Distinguished Speaker Series event of the year. But especially, I'd like to welcome our first Distinguished Speaker, Louis DeJoy. So thank you. Louis, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> How's your mail going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, had some issues, but I, I'll, I'll talk to you about that later. Uh, so, so Lewis, um, how does it feel to be the best known postmaster general since Benjamin Franklin? Yeah, I, I think it feels pretty, pretty good. Um, be, uh, you know, this, uh, when you have to reflect back on, I reflect back on two years and a couple of months right now. And uh, I think the attitudinally towards me is, uh, you know, so much better because of the positive consequence that uh, uh, myself and the team have had on the organization. And uh, um, anything in public service comes with controversy today and you have to work through it. And uh, uh, it, feels, it feels pretty good. And I hope when I, you know, 50 years from now, we still have a viable, uh, productive postal service serving the American people. And uh, that's not the direction it was heading when I got there. So it feels okay. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm going to get into the, the, the work of this transformation and the controversy that, uh, that, that was uh, a part of your, your beginning. But before we get there, uh, I, I think it would be really interesting for the audience to hear a bit about your background. So you, uh, and, and I'm going to fast forward through kind of your, <laughs> your childhood through building a very successful logistics company, and then we'll focus on the, the Postal Service. But, but, but tell us a little bit about your, your family growing up. Uh, so I was born in uh, Brooklyn, New York. I was the first of uh, six children to, uh, uh, my mother was actually 16 when she had me. My father was 18, <coughs> Italian family in uh, Brooklyn. She had, they had five kids with a 20, by, Time they were like 23 years old. They neither of them graduated high school. My father was a, a truck driver, and uh, we spent most of our lives in that inner, you know, city and in, in, in environment. And uh, I, uh, and then we moved out to Long Island when I was 14, 15. But I already had that Brooklyn living experience, which was quite uh, 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 um, helpful. In, in, in my life, I, and uh, eventually uh, moved out to Long Island. And I went on to, uh, you know, try to get out of that role. So I ran out of New York as soon as I, as I could. I went on, became a I became a certified public accountant in my young 20s and worked in an uh, accounting firm uh, for, until I was 25, um, and then, uh, Got a little bored with it. It was before the consulting. It was in the days of tax returns and audit, and that's what I that's what I did. So I moved back to New York and started, you know, in 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 the business and built it to uh, New Breed Logistics, which was, uh, you know, quite like I got it up to fourteen, fifteen thousand people, and I merged it with XPO Logistics, which is one of the largest in the, uh, uh, you know, in the world in terms of you know the, the third-party logistics companies and transportation companies. Uh, after a year of being, a year and a half of being number two, I decided, uh, it, you know, it's time to retire, which I did. I went on the board for several years um, and, uh, you know, uh, started a private equity real estate development small shop and was doing that while I was on the board. And then, uh, you know, pandemic hit and I got the call from the board of the Postal Service uh, uh, you know, it was a period of crisis. The nation was in crisis at the time, and uh, so was the Postal Service. It had been in crisis for a number of years, and uh, I jumped into, I jumped into that. Okay, so uh, so I, I just wanted some of your background to get out there because uh, one of uh, one of the first things I want to ask you about is the you know how did you get this job, uh, but. You, you know, the, the public perception was that you were a, a Trump appointee, that, mm -hmm. that Trump personally picked you for this role, yeah. um, and it had nothing to do with any kind of 
uh, business competence where in fact you had built a, a logistics company, but rather because you, you make no secret that you're, you're Republican and you've supported uh, Republican candidates, that this was purely a, a political play. So tell us about how, how were you actually selected uh, for this role because it's not, it's not a presidential appointment. It's not, and uh, I was uh, uh, actually called by a recruiter late in the uh, 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 late in, in the process. I was called by a, a, a recruiter, and I went through a normal interview process with the board. And um, uh, this went on for several months uh, before they made a, a, a decision. But uh, I had my resume. I mean, the hiring, the help wanted ad said you know, third largest entity in the United States of America, uh, about to run out of cash in 90 days, you know, gonna lose $160 billion over the next 10 years, and has a negative $150 billion balance sheet. And the only alternative, with two alternatives that were out there, is one is, you know, beg the Congress to get $70 billion to keep us alive for a couple of years, or come up with something. I said, well, I'll take the come up with something option, and uh, you know the board, you know, bipartisan board. Uh, we discussed a number of ideas. My biggest idea is we had to have a plan. We were the only ones who could solve the issues of the postal service, uh, and they bought the board bought into it, and uh, uh, they, uh, they they extended me an offer, and uh, uh, the president found out about it after I accepted. I and mean, I wouldn't. Uh, I had a relationship with him. Uh, but I knew he would tweet something, so I never told him anything. And we moved, uh, you know, we moved, uh, uh, we, we moved through it. And that's the, that's the process that, uh, you know, that, 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 that we went to. So, yeah. so uh, you know, with, with that description in terms of the, the, the condition of the Postal Service, you know, anyone would want that job, right, given yeah. the, uh, what, what you were inheriting. And, and of course, um, Little, little did you know uh, what would happen in terms of the, the way you would be received in that job. So uh, as, you, as you were looking at what needed to be done, uh, I, I heard you tell this interesting story, uh, which is you discovered that, that the trucks weren't running on time mm -hmm. and the trucks were running empty. And so you, you made a decision to run the trucks on time. How did that work out for you? Yeah, well, the trucks ran on time. They just forgot to put the mail on it, right? And that was uh, uh, an interesting uh, uh, thing. The, the, you know, the, the organization was uh, in, you know, in complete disarray, both from its operating strategy and its organization strategy. And uh, uh, upon my uh, arrival, uh, one of the things was we had just received an OIG report about 55,000 trucks running around the country, 30 a day, 30% full, and how we don't run anything on time, and, and, and on and on and on. And in trying to uh, begin to have the organization focus on uh, operation precision and try and also have the Congress look at us as we're actually trying to do something. Uh, I, uh, and I had the previous organization structure with a COO and, you know, and, and so forth, which had an area vice presidents. It was a very dis, um, um, uh, decentralized type of organization, which I disagreed with in terms of a logistics structure for a national network. But I, um, uh, I asked the, the team, you know, look at this report. We need to start moving. Can we put together a plan to get the trucks, you know, moving on time and so forth? So they went away for three weeks, came back with a plan. We can all do it. We had a meeting on how they were going to do it. Boom, we said go. Uh, and, you know, kind of shut the country down. Uh, this was in July, way, way ahead of the election time. I could always say, all right, don't run the trucks on time anymore, right? And boom, it's fixed. Uh, uh, but it took a couple of weeks to figure out to actually get reports back up to me with regard to the problem. Um, and, uh, uh, and the whole thing was none of our schedules, our, we, we ran the trucks on time, but our production schedules never made 
the, the mail never got on the trucks. You know, mail and packages never got on the trucks. So jumped in, got involved. We fixed it in, the, you know, in a, cu a couple of weeks. Um, and then I reorganized the whole organization and basically broke it into, you know, 16, had 16 direct reports uh, and knew that, you know, knew that I had, you know, that type of issue on my hand when the simplest thing, like run the trucks on time, can't be accomplished. I mean, everybody else in the world that runs a business that has 55,000 trucks running around is able to run them on time. And uh, we were not. And so I took a different, uh, you know, different organizational approach and began to really dive into heavily into every detailed aspect of the operation before we make decisions. And we've had tremendous success with that. With, you know, there's a new leadership team all internal, all promoted from within, uh, and they understand the expectations uh, that I have, and they believe in the expectations that we have. The only way the United States Postal Service survives, you know, to deliver mail and packages to 163 million addresses a day is by doing it, you know, uh, operationally efficiently, which we can, and we could be people friendly with it in the organization. We have a $35 billion target in terms of cost takeout that I see clearly, that the management team seems clearly. It just comes from filling our trucks up more, redo, redoing our network, um, um, and we have to get some more of the package business, which we're losing. We've been losing because of the lack of, lack of our sales a efforts, lack of our IT capabilities, and lack of any real strategy around uh, competing with FedEx and UPS and, and, and Amazon and uh, other than taking their packages at the last mile and delivering it. That's a loser for us. It's been a loser for us. And uh, you know, we're, out to, we're out to fix that. Yeah. So the uh, unfortunate consequence of the decision to, to run the trucks on time, you know, number one, uh, mail wasn't getting on the trucks. But number two, this is when the, the story really Took, took root, which was there was election meddling happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the, uh, I, I, I have to ask you, uh, as this intensified, uh, and then it, it got stronger as decisions were made around taking out collection boxes and sorting machines, uh, were those, were those decisions that had anything to do with pressure you were receiving from the, the, the administration at the time asking you to put your thumb on the scale of this election? No. So first, you know, just in general, from a personality standpoint, I don't actually, like, feel pressure. So it was not anything anybody was pressuring uh, me to do from either, uh, you know, side of the uh, uh, aisle or from within. I mean, we were out to... Um, uh, uh, the, 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 the postal blue boxes have been taken out five and six thousand a year for whatever reasons we took them out to that, you know, from my standpoint at the time, and it really comes down to, uh, is there enough mail being collected, right? And that had been going on for years, every year. Highest, highest takeout was like six thousand boxes in the, during the, the, during the President Obama's uh, you know, a uh, uh, term in, in one year. This was a process that got done well beneath, you know, we had this COO organization structure. That was going on before I got there. Half had been taken out first half of the year, the second in the uh, second half of the year. Mail, blue boxes are just a form of access. We have 31,000 retail centers around the country. We have uh, 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 alter, other ways to get mail, in, you know, in, in, into the system. So that was, that was going on when I got there, and we continued to go, uh, let's go on. The, the sorting machines, there were, the, the, the subsequently I found these sorting machines operated at about 20% utilization, right? And we had no room for packages. It was in the middle of the pa pandemic. We hadn't retooled anything for, for package business. In fact, our package business was, 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 was dying. Uh, these machines were move, being moved out of the way uh, to make room to do hand-to-hand -hand combat with packages as they came in, and, and maybe the size of a big dining room table. Uh, no effect on, on mail you know, processing operationally. 
uh, uh, but this, in fact, too, was going on at, 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 you know, at, at the time. Uh, the, during that process, the mail backlog from running the trucks on time, this was in August when this hit, when this hit had already been cleared up. Mail was running, moving on time, and, 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 and so forth. Uh, it was a sensitive time for the country, right? And uh, uh, this whole thing was, was going on with this, and I got hauled up to Congress a number of times. I met privately with, uh, with House and Senate leadership. I met, uh, on, you know, in Congress. I testified for, you know, 16, you know, many, many hours. And there were those who wanted to make a big, you know, big deal out of it. Uh, and then what else I was significant, really concerned about it. Uh, and uh, but at the end of the day, we delivered, you know, we, I set up special teams. I stopped. I mean, my personality was not to stop on the, you know, the machines and so forth, but it was just such a heightened, uh, 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 um, you know, time that I decided, to, you know, to, to, to do that. And I uh, spoke with the, with, the, with the House and Senate leadership. We you know, let, let them know, and then uh, um, we did an excellent job on delivering ballots, right? 99 point something within a, a, you know, a certain point of time. I put a special, uh, I formed a, a, a number of different uh, um, um, task force, both with our union, with our board, uh, with our operations people, um, and, and so forth. And since then have significantly strengthened that with, uh, we used to stand up this structure once a year, I put in a permanent structure now to deal with uh, secretaries of state, election board officials, to develop uh, 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 you know this uh, 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 stuff. So at the end of the and the postal service always we're the most stable thing in election processes. We do it the same way over the last you know ten years. Many states and electoral boards change their processes and and, and so forth. And we have uh, we have uh, performed, but it was a. Uh, uh, you know, a heightened period of political, you know, political rhetoric, and uh, it was unfortunate, uh, you know, and it was something I was not happy that I brought onto the organization, uh, but uh, you know, at the time, and uh, uh, but everybody was supportive. I mean, I have good support from within the organization, from within the unions, at, and even at the time, and we 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 worked through it, uh, and uh, we had the election. And then we moved on. Right? So uh, you have you you have uh, said before you've got really thick skin. Mm -hmm. uh, with with that thick skin, did the intensity of this response surprise you? Well, I think so. I think everyone. And listen, I've been around politics a long time, and everyone was was surprised at the intensity, whether it was in the Postal Service or not. There was a, a great deal of, in, 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 you know, in, in, in intensity there. What was, was more surprising to me is the lack of either understanding or interest in the dire position the United States Postal Service was in. So I think the uh, uh, yes, I was surprised by the thought that people. I mean, I had no background of overthrowing countries in my history, right? That was not anything I had ever done before, uh, and uh, you know, I was embarking on my public service at a point in my career that I could lend my expertise and my my time in a time when you know I was, you know, we were, if, listen. If we didn't have the pandemic, I might not have even joined the Postal Service, but it was that particular calling that made me go there. And, um, you know, the, the, the consequence of everything, was it surprising? I guess, yeah, it was surprising, but I don't get to, like, dwell on these things. I surprise for a day, and then I move on and do what I got to do. And that's been kind of how I run my life. And... Uh, uh, so, you know, that, that, that was, it was it. I think, you know, when I think about what, and I travel the country all the time, I got 650,000 employees and I walk in and, you know, I get standing ovations 
everywhere I go because I'm fighting for the organization, making, making improvements. And we discuss, you know, the unfortunate, I mean, I can't imagine what people were thinking when this, all this was being aimed at me while I was trying to, while I was the head of the, uh, head of the organization. And uh, I'll never forget, I was being prepped for my first testimony. And uh, the lawyer in our, in our government affairs, and I have like 500 lawyers, she says, so she get me all prepped. And she says, now remember, she says, uh, you know, what you really need to worry about is there's 650,000 people watching that haven't made their mind up about you yet. In fact, I haven't made my mind up about you yet. Right? And it rung through my head as I was uh, going. That was up helpful. It, it is helpful because, you know, you're in a fight. People are attacking you. They're attacking your family. They're attacking your career. They're attacking your life. And you're, what you're trying to do is just figure out how to deliver mail. But at the end of the day, I tried to answer all, you know, I'm going to try and run about my day in, in, with regard for the concern for my employees and delivering to the American people, 163 million ashes. That's the most important thing. That's how I go to work. I run to work in the morning, right? And you drag me out of the house at night, and that's what I'm focused on. That's what I was focused on then. I knew less about how to do uh, the details that I do now, uh, 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 but I did know what was wrong and what needed to happen to be fixed. And one of them was to uh, you know, try and get the people behind me, let them see that we we're just really trying to fix the place. There is no alignment with anything else. And they believe that now. 650,000 people believe that. Yeah. Minus a few here or there. Yeah. So, uh, so it's important to know how do you respond when, when, you, get, uh, when you get thrown into the, the public fire here. Um, and the election happens, uh, new administration, Many people assume that with a new president, that that once the president appointed uh, appointed the uh, uh, new new uh, board of governors members, that that you would be booted out. You're still here, uh, but uh, but what's interesting is you you decided to put your head down and do the work. And as you think about the situation that you were trying to correct, just to, to give some of the highlights, a uh, requirement to pre-fund these retirement benefits that, that had you on a, a path to lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You'd already been losing significant amounts. A uh, requirement that you not lose any money by law. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a requirement that you serve every customer in the country so you couldn't pick and choose. So these are just some of the, some of the challenges that, that you faced. And, and I think you, you surprised people because you actually were able to create bipartisan support for postal service reform. So can you, can you tell us first the key elements of that reform that are critical to transform the organization? And then I wanna dig into with this background of everybody, not everybody, but half the population hating you, mm -hmm. how, how did you do something which is so vanishingly rare, which is to create bipartisan support within Congress? So, I mean, it, it started out with, we created a plan, which we can talk about, with, you know, which was, had fundamental uh, operational and sales and marketing strategies, a basic 10-year plan. And part of that plan was to solve a 15-year-old major problem, uh, which was the Medicare, was the retirement pre-funding and lack of Medicare integration, uh, which, the, uh, uh, which the Postal Service had been trying, and, and industry associations had been trying to get passed for 15 years. It was an unfair uh, uh, mandate that came in in 2006. Um, and immediately thereafter, we had the recession, we had the 2008 re recession, and the, just decline, rapid decline, 45% decline in mail volume. And uh, the, the organization failed to re respond to that strategy, but we were losing $10 billion a year. And a big portion of this was, uh, in, had been the Medicare integration. Could never, get, uh, could never get the bill passed, couldn't get out of committee, so on and so forth. I actually, uh, Ron, uh, it was uh, the chair at the time, Ron Bloom was a Democrat, a uh, good friend of, of mine. He was President Obama's car guy. He was involved with saving 
uh, uh, you know, the, the, the GM and, and, and so forth. But we put a strategy together with the, with the House and Senate leadership at the time, which happened to be de Democrat, Chairwoman Maloney, um, and uh, 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 ranking and, and, and uh, 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 Senator Peters, who was the chair of the, the, the Senate committee. And I brought in, and the deal was that we made amongst ourselves uh, and the unions, the four u major union leaders, that we would move forward with the, with the Medicare integration, keep it simple, right, and straightforward. My position was don't put any operating restrictions on us. We have to make these changes. Uh, they agreed, and my task was to bring along, uh, you know, bring along Republican support, you know, for it, uh, uh, which uh, I spayed in very close contact with, you know, uh, Senator Schumer, Senator Peters, Carol Maloney, um, uh, uh, and other, you know, Democrats, and we brought, uh, uh, and I went up to the Hill maybe 40 times. I spoke in front of multiple, you know, the House and Senate. Uh, we worked, I worked, uh, you know, problems between people like Senator uh, Rick Scott and Senator Schumer and, 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 and so forth. It was a fascinating uh, 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 process, which eventually uh, we received uh, 340 votes in the House for and 81 votes in the Senate, you know, to, pa you know, to, pass, the, to pass the legislation. It was a this had been going on for 12 or 13 years trying to get it passed. And it was the biggest bipartisan bill, you know, of, you know uh, uh, on a matter like this. Um, and it was, you know, very much celebrated. And it, it took, it was $50 billion of the $160 billion loss we, need to, we needed to get out. And importantly in there, one of the things that I came out with early in our plan, it was other parts of the legislation, it was heavy lo heavily lobbied against by many people that uh, a thriving postal service would not be beneficial to. So it was you know, uh, uh, you know, heavily lobbied against. Um, uh, but also in the bill, besides getting the financial, uh, and I don't even say it's relief, it's you know, making it right. It was, you know, un unfair legislation. We also had put in, I came out real early on that we needed, in, in my plan, my first board speech was, we had to commit to delivering to 163 million addresses six days a week. Universal service mission was underdefined. I wanted to define it, right? That gave us a, a target. If you came in to the postal service in the middle of the pandemic, you, and you saw what we did around the country, which I did. I traveled around the country, uh, you know, to uh, uh, say this. You would, you would never really want to touch that. And I also felt it was a, 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 a position that we could use to grow our business as we move forward if we aligned it uh, 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 properly. So that was in there. That became law. That was not law. Uh, that became law. And the other thing was it said we had a, you know, uh, which we kind of designed the language, an integrated mail and package network, which means you have to move mail and packages together to get to the address and deliver at the same time. That gives us uh, revenue synergies, it gives us cost synergies, uh, and that was an important aspect that I needed to keep in, 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 you, know, uh, 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 you know, in there in the, uh, uh, when the legislation went through. And, it, it, and the, the, the uh, uh, Democrats and Republicans helped me with that, help keep that you know, sanitized and straightforward. And it was the simplicity of the bill and the fact that it was sitting up there like a pinata with everybody whacking at it. And we continued to keep it together and it went through as it was originally written and boom, it was a big, uh, you know, big celebration, big White House, you know, celebration. I got invited to the White House, you know, and uh, which led to other things like the KIT program and, and uh, you, know, uh, you know, other, uh, you know, other stuff. So, uh, it's a big accomplishment. It was righting a wrong, and it gave us also a voice, right? The team learned a lot about having, and you know, it came into a battled, you know, battle scarred, just battled, beaten down, right? And we've, you know, they've liberated it. We worked a plan. We had a position. We stayed firm in it. When you think of government agencies, federal agencies, especially over the last 20 years, they have become more impactful on Americans' lives, right? Because of their, because of their voice, their ideology, you know, their, whatever it is that they want to pursue. Not the Postal Service. We were fragmented. 
were ripped apart in terms of a voice, and that's what led to a poor operational strategy and a poor organizational strategy. Well, this whole so this success kind of you know put us back in you know where there's a great deal of confidence you know running around, and there's a great deal of trust you know with within eight you know within the house within the house you know right now all the oversight committees are you know democratic control, and we have a good relationship with the oversight committees, and you know so so that uh, I, I want to follow up on that, which is what. What can you do to help the, the rest of us uh, in the country where, where polarization has been so debilitating, where you went through, again, uh, a, a very, very difficult stretch, and yet coming out of that, you're still able to build trust with congressional leaders and, and with a new White House team. What, yeah. what do you think you did that allowed you to do what has escaped so many others, which is to, to build trust you know, across these, these, these bridges that, that separate, uh, separate us in this very polarized world. I did my job. I focused on my job, right? I focused on operating the United States Postal Service within the parameters of the law. There's a lot of policy talk, and this is part of it, there's a lot of policy talk on everything. But in the meantime, while people are debating policy and debating policy for uh, the sake of policy or debating policy to have a position on something that they can either run on or get money or what, you know, or, you know, do good as, it, as, as they, they, they see it, uh, we, I took it very seriously that we have laws, right, that we need to operate in and until such time as those laws are change and those policies take the shape of laws, we got mail to deliver and we have costs to cover. And we're in a, you know, we're in a cry, we're going down and we need to straighten up. So I did that and then I engaged. I engaged with everybody. I engaged with the unions, I engaged with our people, I engaged with the House and, you know, and, and, and Senate members, I engaged with the White House, I engaged with everybody. I'm always accessible. Pick up my phone any point in time, and you know I have a, a strategy uh, 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 that is, for the most part, being accepted and getting part participation in. And uh, uh, there are, you know, you most of what you hear right now to the negative. It doesn't make any sense. I mean that we we have to cover our cost, right? So if we don't cover, we don't get money from anywhere. So you know. So uh, uh, this, this, there's a discussion, is it a service or a business, right? Well, when you have to cover your cost, right, we know what the mission is. The United States Postal Service knows what the mission is, okay? Then they were, you know, delivering to 163 million addresses. But we have this unique thing that we have to cover our own cost. And many members of Congress don't even know that. They talk about, get, you know, getting annual funding. I don't get annual funding. I don't get any funding. Right, so you know the, the 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 whole thing is just having a pragmatic, and it's fortunate because I'm not in. If I was in a business, a, a, in a uh, an agency that had to have a lot of policy, right, I would be dealing with a different dynamic, which maybe I would not be as successful in, right. Uh, but here, there was something missing in the postal service over the last 15 years. Nobody was running it. Right, and it became when we start when I started to you know push, and then the leadership team engaged, and uh, uh, and we started to run and engage, and you know uh, uh, people started believing that we're trying to do the you know the right thing because we're pretty down the line on what we're supposed to be doing, and uh, 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 you know, and that's you keep doing that long enough, people really find out what you're about, and that's what they did. They found out. What I was about, what the team was about, and it's you know, it's working right now. Okay, so I heard you give a speech uh, where you you started going on a rant about air, and you you end up saying I hate air. Uh, now, can you explain why hating air is not actually being uh, anti-environmental, uh, but rather the opposite? So, what what yeah. what is it about air that 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 uh, troubles so, you so much and actually allows the, the Postal Service to be much more environmentally friendly than it has been. Yeah, so, you know, we 
haphazard, as the as mail volume declined and package business grew, uh, we expand, we haphazardly put a network together uh, where right now we move mail and packages through about 500 different facilities around the country where, uh, where, uh, where in the same city, and these are called plants, we can, uh, if you want to know, like in Atlanta, we have 10 plants in Atlanta. And you want to know where they are? Just watch the first letter, and it'll move to probably five of them. You can just follow it before it goes out to Oregon. So very haphazard operating uh, a, a, a strategy. And we run, because of where mail uh, begins and ends in this, in, this net, in this kind of network, we create 55 to 60,000 truckloads a day that have, uh, from the real standpoint of product, are probably only 25% full, right? There's air in the trays, there's air in the containers, and we just run trucks and burn people and burn, you know, throughout the, 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 these things. And this is what we're out to. Then it goes down to, from these places, it goes to uh, 20,000 delivery units and hubs, right? Which, you know, get to, uh, 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 which eventually get to our 250, uh, 300,000 carriers, right? So from the delivery, from, the, from these hub, from the plants to these hubs, we're as low as, I mean, we probably have four or 5,000 loads a day moving that have one container in it, but it has to get there, right? All of this is burning a big carbon footprint. It's costing a ton of money, and you can't make a product out of it, right? You can't, you know, today, today it's, you know, the package delivery business, which is, you know, we're, gonna, we're building a mail system, we're saving a mail system, we have to do it by having an effective package delivery business. I mean, when you look at FedEx, UPS, you know, 60 hubs, they move stuff around. That's what we're trying to get to. That will consolidate, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 you know the, the freight moving in and out of a region. And then we are gonna start aggregating these, you know, we, they talk about last mile. We don't deliver every last mile. We're actually in every last mile. Right, and that's not an effective way to you know to do delivery. It's an effective way to do retail, but not an effective way to do delivery. So we're beginning to aggregate and come up with strategies that aggregate uh, volume and move it on. And I can I believe we'll get 20, 25 percent reduction in this. We spend twelve billion dollars a year in transportation. Uh, you know, 20, 25 percent is two and a half billion dollars. It's a whole lot of carbon burning. A whole lot of carbon burning. And then we cross stock it at different facilities. That will come down. That's a whole lot of forklifts and, you know, uh, and, and, and so forth. And we're going to shed 150 to, you know, to 175 different annexes that we've built up over the years in a haphazard manner. Uh, and we're putting some new, you know, putting some new facilities. We're redesigning everything. But that, that is a big part of the problem. It chews money. It chews time. It burns carbon. It's, everything's wrong about it. Everything's wrong about it. And, you know, we're, we're, we're going to fix it. Okay. So um, given, given the uh, kind of the, the origin story, uh, you, you said you thought that you would spend your life trying to make money. Mm -hmm. and, and then you found yourself in the role of public service. And tell us, tell us what, what has been uh, different about a public service role versus the role of building a business and, and trying to make that business profitable. Yeah, so it, it, it's actually, uh, you know, I'm blessed to have this position now. When you look at the journey, I wanted to make money because I thought money was a good way to get out of the environment that I, I came in and, and a way to be, you know, consequential in, 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 in my life. And uh, you know, uh, and have been right between building a big company, be, you know, my engagement in f philanthropy, and my impact over 20 years in in, po in you know who gets elected and, and so forth. That's that's pretty fulfilling in in in, in, in that regard. But nothing compare you know having all that behind me. Nothing compares to the rewarding feeling. Of doing this, it's uh, you know, I, I you know I you, you almost would, would pay, in fact it, well, 
in his old energy, you, you, you would pay to do this, right? And, uh, 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 but uh, the, the um, you know, when I go out to, uh, first of all, it's a big problem and it needs to be fixed if it's going to survive and serve the American people into the future. And uh, 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 I know how to do that, right? So, and I'm available. I was available and, 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 and able in that regard. And then you start to go around the country and you see what a postmaster is in a small town and with three carriers that go out and you see that small town and you, you, you're involved with, you know, when a, when a hurricane uh, happens and we're the first sign of getting back to normalcy where these people in these communities, our employees in these communities, uh, their lights are out there without water and they come in to deliver you know, the mail and, 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 and so forth. Uh, uh, you, it begins to build in your, uh, 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 your you know, uh, your commitment, you know, to uh, uh, the greatness of this, of, the, of this institution and the ability to, to serve, uh, uh, you know, serve the public and serve the organization and not be, be, have it be about doing, right? Not pontificating, not, you know, you know, this is all about execution. It's an operational service at the end of the day is what we do. We deliver mail and packages, right? It's pretty straightforward. Let's just do it. And, um, uh, uh, and that's what I in, in, in enjoy about it. I don't spend much time about what's going on in the House, the Senate, this and that. I get, I, I get to deploy my business and operational skills on a public service mission with a great team and a great leadership team and a great group of people uh, that are committed you know, to, to, cert, you know, to service. And it's inspiring, I get inspired. I mean, at, at, you know, if some, I, I can't, I could, I could not imagine walking out the door without seeing the trajectory changed, right? We're not there yet, we're gonna lose 160 billion we're down to about losing 70 billion. Whether I run out of cash tomorrow or three years from now, that's still, you know this, it's a bad plan, right? We gotta fix that. And uh, uh, once we do that to, together, and everybody's working together on this, union leadership, we've, we've commanded a no, you know, the, the, the thing. And there's a lot of things that are not right, you know, that are, but, but the, you know, the big, big stuff which is what's going to you know, save the organization, is just uh, you know, overwhelming in terms of the, the, the feeling and energy that it, that it, that it gives me to, uh, to, to, you know, to, lead this, to lead this organization. Okay, I'm going to ask one more question and then I'm going to turn it over to the audience to ask any questions you have. So uh, as you reflect on this leadership journey that, that you've been on, uh, and all the, the wisdom that you've accumulated, what, what would you tell your, your younger self, uh, say the age of the, the students who are embarking on their careers, uh, kind of the, the advice that, that you would give yourself that you've learned, or, or even yourself from two years ago, the advice that you've learned on this journey? Yeah. Well, I think I, I, I used to say this when I was, you know, to my kids when they were growing up, I'd have a bunch of things I would tell them. And I conclude with, and the most important thing, if you don't remember any of these things, remember this one, and that is don't do anything stupid, right? <laughs> and that's an important, uh, 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 does, that, does that mean you did a bunch of stupid things growing yeah, up? And you, who you has the hard way? Or? Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely, uh, I, I definitely uh, have uh, and survived them and corrected them. Uh, uh, but I, I think, uh, but getting more pointed to the question, it, it's, uh, I, I would say, in, you know, engage, right? Engage and try and be consequential in everything you do uh, uh, because it's important. It's important for the people you're working with. It's important for the people if you're in a leadership role. It's important for customers, for all, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, it, it, it's important to be engaged and don't, you know, be smart about it. I guess is to don't be anything stupid, right? So you need to be reflect. You need to, you know, consider your 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 environment, 
And over the last two years, I've learned a lot about how to navigate what is a, a pretty punitive environment if you make a mistake, right? And uh, 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 so uh, I, I get, uh, uh, so, you know, you, you, it, that, that's an important thing. And I'm, you know, observant of that. I'm respectful of, of uh, more respectful of people's uh, uh, of, of, of positions because in my role now, I need to be. That's part of the job, right? So there is no other side of anything, right, when it comes to, now, when it comes to delivering mail and packages, you know, that's my, you know, that I know, but there's a lot around a public service mission or around, you know, in my sphere, uh, I gotta be mindful of everybody's interest and, and am. And uh, that is in, in many ways, kind of completes you, <laughs> for lack of a better, <laughs> you know, a better uh, ex ex explanation on it. Okay, yeah. perfect. So questions from the audience. Can you go to the microphone so people can hear you? Mr. Joy, thank you so much for coming. Um, I, my question is based on, I have family members who are very proud to be U.S. Postal Service employees and former colleagues who used, uh, who used to work with the U.S. Postal Service. So my question is, you know, we're all going to be hopefully consequential leaders in business. One of the things that we may have to contend with is working with unions, mm -hmm. particularly in environments which are challenging or threatening to people's livelihoods or to their health and wellness. Now, I wonder from your experience, going from a private held company that, that you built and ran yourself to now working with such a large enterprise with the US Postal Service, how have you thought about the role of unions? And how have you thought as a leader and as a business leader, as you said, operational execution, the role that unions play in being able to execute that mission? And would you have any advice for us as future leaders in business of how to consider working with unions in those ways? So, so it's a, 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 good, a good question. Most of my private life, and we built up to over you know, 100,000 employees, we uh, was, uh, had non-union environment, but I had long-term employees. And, and, uh, um, uh, and we worked in many union environments. I did big projects for Boeing. Boeing's all union, inside their plants and so forth. And we had different ways of uh, you know, mo you know, motivating um, uh, 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 people and keeping our retention and, stay, and, and staying union free to have a direct relationship with you know, our employees is really what, uh, what we set out to uh, 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 you know, to you know, to do. Uh, in this case, the the unions exist and have existed for a long time, uh, and to a great extent, uh, the people in the organization have had some uh, abusive type of you know experience over there. There's a lot of stress, a lot of stress in the organization. In fact, we had a, a thing called pre-career. We had 45% turnover in 200,000 200, people. 45% turnover, 200,000 people. It's just, you know, just crazy. I set out to convert those to full-time people to reduce that, 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 that side of the thing. I do not, our issues are so broad in the organization from an infrastructure standpoint, from a, um, uh, a uh, managed, historical management you know, standpoint, operational strategy, that this is, you know, the, the union, I, I meet with them all the time. I get, you know, and it is part of my, one of my stakeholders, right? They're part of, I have seven of them, seven unions, right? And I'd rather have one. Because if I had one, there's so many trade. Some of the things we're working on right now is, well, if I put the machine in here, it changes the work complement from this union to that union, right? That is something I need to navigate. When we put, uh, when we, um, uh, if we merge two plants together, right? It's this president versus this local versus this local. 
right? I mean, there are places in our facilities where there's a green zone plant pa painted where this person can drop something here and, and, and that. Now, that's ex extreme that we need to get rid of and we'll fix. But the, the, the union, listen, in, in, the co in COVID, right, it's the unions. We work with management and the unions to put out policies to protect our, 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 our people. I think for the amount of, for the improvements that we need to make, uh, it is, I got to sell more, right? Because I have, in many cases, and, and they, the leadership has this too. I mean, there are basically complaint aggregators out there that take, <laughs> you know, everything and aggregate, and they have a channel to, you know, to do that. And we just have to, we have to deal with it. But in my case, when I walked in, this was just a collection of you know, 150,000 people here and 150,000 people here and 150,000 people here that were witnessing the, the destruction of the organization. And they just had, they came up with, the, nobody, they just came up with their own individual ideas on how to fix it. Uh, and I am using their relationship with their people. I talk to you know, their people and them and their boards to, to sign up for change and help me do it. And uh, I think uh, at this particular point in time, it's pretty helpful to me, actually. I mean, I got to go through, you know, sometimes I sign a, you know, a, a thing to get rid of me and this and that. But uh, I, I think overall, the, the, the working with me on a, on a strategy, and, and also because we're still building out the management team for this transformational change, and I use them to give me insight and, and information on what it is that I, I didn't get on a, from the management side. Uh, long term, everybody, whatever it is, I mean, we need to be productive, right? We need to, you know, a dollar's pay, whatever it is, needs to produce the expected yield on what it is that we're, 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 we're doing. And that's, uh, uh, I made it, I got a lot of flack. And the front of the flack that you don't see is the mailer 60%, 65% of what we deliver is, is for, for businesses, right? And when I put out the plan, they were, ki they were they weren't killing me because I didn't take it, but they were complaining that I didn't take away from employee benefits, the retirement plan. I thought it was too big, right? I didn't do anything against, against the employees. And in fact, I converted 100,000 people. Well, I looked at the way, I'm not a novice. I looked at the wages. I looked at where the labor market was going. I made a determination that we, we needed to be con you know, competitive, that this... Turnover was a black mark on the organization. And you're part of an agency in the United States of America. You need to have a livable wage and a livable retirement. That's it, right? So we need to find you know, a way to uh, do that and price ourselves that way and so forth. Now, some of the work rules we, we need to get around and will. But for the most part, we could manage you know, through them uh, 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 you know, to get where we need to, need to go. At some point, there's a refinement that if you really want to make it right, you're going to have to talk about some pretty silly things. Uh, but I think, you know, that is probably a different postmaster general at that particular point in time, right? So uh, I consider it a help at the Postal Service. Uh, 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 we, uh, uh, it, it's part of, um, you, know, I'd you know, I'd rather see Postal Proud than Union Proud. Uh, I'd rather, that's been a big part of what I, what, what I see. I mean, you know, the Democrats like the unions, uh, who likes the postmasters, this guy likes that, everybody hates management. That's the environment I came into that I'm trying to change and get everybody on the same team because that's what fragmented the organization. And we're, we're having success, uh, 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 you know, success in, 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 in doing it. Nothing is perfect. Uh, if you weren't, if you were this big of an organization, and you were like Amazon or FedEx or something you'd be worried about, you'd be trying to not be unionized, I guess, right? Uh, I, 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 there's a lot that we have going for us now that I, in many ways, I'd rather have my problems than theirs, right? I, I have to break even, I don't have to worry about my stock price, I don't have to worry about a whole bunch of things. I just gotta run us right and take care of our people, which is a big, you know, despite public opinion, which is a big important thing to me. Right, it's a big important thing. I mean, I have done things, we have done, this team has done things to get the organization properly staffed, to get through the pandemic, right? To, to uh, give more secure, you know, get, equip them better, equip them better to do the job. 
I mean, they were under-resourced in just about every aspect of physical distribution that one would be. To put more direct, you know, people want to have a general idea of what they're doing, right? Most people uh, do that, actually want to come in and, do, you know, do a good, uh, 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 you know, job. So, uh, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, one of my first days out in the delivery unit, a guy came over to me in Chicago and says, the problem with the Postal Service is politics and management. And then began to walk away. <laughs> so I grabbed him and started talking about it. You know, the fact of the matter is, in its simplicity, you know, uh, uh, that, in fact, was, you know, a big part of it, right? And uh, so we're out to uh, 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 fix that. So from my standpoint, for what we got to do right now, it's very workable and they're part of the team, and uh, uh, I, I enjoy most of their support, and they, they enjoy mine, so. Very much. Okay, Is, next question. Hi, thank you for being here. I'll keep my question short and sweet. Why should the USPS not be privatized? Good question. Um, USPS should not be privatized if you actually want to get mail to 163 million addresses uh, five, six days, five, even five days a week, but six days a week, we would, we would lose uh, a, a big part of, a big part of America would lose uh, a, a mail, affordable mail service. Uh, it's plain and simple as that. And I am, you know my, you know my background, I'm not a big one on government involvement in everything. But this is very, very true. A big part of America, if you go up into Alaska and see what we, we actually are the way people get to eat and bathe, right? Uh, uh, and, and to a debt, it costs us five, we probably lose $500 million a year doing that, that, that business up there. But we go to every single uh, tribal town and, the, and, and, and so forth. You go out into other parts of the country. That's the only way they get... Uh, 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 get their mail, communications, medicines, so on and so forth. The pri you know, the, uh, 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 so we're, we, and we have to get better at what we're doing, and I think we will be a good conduit for increased commerce, uh, and as we're a better conduit for increased commerce, uh, we will be, uh, uh, help these rural areas, we'll help small business uh, uh, better. I've opened up, you know, at, we opened up USPS Connect. It's the same service that Amazon gets to small businesses, right? And you know, you know, right on in, in, in their local towns. So it is. I mean, what's the the alternative uh, uh, is to not have that. And uh, uh, personally, you know, while well, I don't talk much about policy, uh, uh, that will. Uh, 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 I think that's a. You would get nobody would really vote for it <laughs> because most most representatives in in the House and Senate have constituents that rely on the Postal Service, and it would it would not uh, uh, it, it would not happen. Now it's an issue. Sixty percent. I mean, a big part of our it's called you know you may call it junk mail. It's actually marketing mail uh, that gets this you know dis, di, di, distributed. Uh, uh, but, but there is a, a, lot, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, package business and important mail that gets out to the, you know, to these uh, things. And it would, it would be, uh, 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 it would be, be signed. It, there would have to be so many requirements about continuing to do what we do in other countries where they privatize them, right? And, you know, a big one is, uh, you know, Deutsche, you know, D -D you know, Deutsche Post, right? Uh, at Frank Appel, Dr. Appel, a huge corporation, right? He spends very little time on mail, on the post office. He's, he owns all these different uh, companies. Well, we, you know, I guess that's a way there, but this would be such a drain, such a financial drain, just doing the non-profitable things that come with serving, uh, 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 you know, serving America uh, that uh, uh, it, it, wouldn't, it, it wouldn't work. And that's why I'm, you know, I'm raising prices because we've been under a defective pricing model for 15 years. I tell the mailers that, uh, uh, and that's why I committed to delivering to, uh, uh, you know, every every you know every address. So, good deal. Thank you. Thank you. So, Lewis, do you, do you actually 
know the most difficult address that you deliver to? We do have donkeys that go down the Grand Canyon, right? That mail would stop. I don't think anybody would want to, you know, uh, you know, do that. And a lot of the mail around uh, 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 up in uh, 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 Alaska. Mike, you were just up in Alaska, in, you know, watching some of that. I'll be go going up. Uh, getting in and out of Puerto Rico is very, very, very hard, right? And uh, uh, you know, our service has been, you know, uh, problematic. We lost buildings. I'm trying to build a new building. In, in, in Puerto Rico, it's, it's, it's tough to do. Um, so we have a lot of problematic uh, 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 areas. And to, to see the knowledge of the cat. So we delivered the test kits, right? This was a program put together. Postal Service, it's used my background in fulfillment. Postal Service never did this before. The White House called, right? We, uh, I got paid. I said, you got to pay me in advance. I need money, right? And, and, and they did. Uh, and within three weeks, we put together a distribution program that picked and packed uh, and delivered uh, three million fulfillment orders over our, you know, it came in over our website. We had like 40 million orders in six hours. Three million uh, a day, right? Three million, you know, 60% in one, it, within 24 hours, 90% within two days, once we had the inventory to ship. Phenomenal, pro, you know, Walmart ships about a million and a half a day. Within, you know, that time frame, we put that to, uh, uh, together. And the knowledge of, we found out that the knowledge of the carrier for multiple living dwellings and even some universities about how to get the package to a name versus an address was really helpful in us, you know, getting the stuff delivered and then also correcting our databases uh, 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 you know, on this stuff. So you go into multiple dwellings, and it's it's the knowledge of the you know the carry, which is why it's important to keep them and not have the turnover and, and so forth. I envision you know we will be if you know we move to we will be the preferred delivery provider in the nation, right? It's just that is the strategy, uh, delivering you know to every American household in an affordable manner and very timely on a routine basis. Uh, that's the postal service we in, in envision, you know, for the future, and will be the most used government organization in in the nation, and I would say the best run when we get done with this, right? We with our most highly measured organization on the planet, right? We have a quality auditor at the end of every delivery. They're looking at this stuff. They want to know, you know, and we report out metrics and 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 so forth and. Uh, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna live up to that. We're gonna improve on 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 that, and uh, 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 but we'll still have those difficult addresses. Okay. Well, Lewis, we're we're at time, uh, but I wanted to to thank you so much for for joining the Fuqua community, and I I loved your message as a school that cares deeply about consequential leadership. Your message to our students to be consequential is just a a fantastic message. So. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> ship, ship your Christmas presents, you, you, USPS. We're ready.